Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over the definition of what rings are, okay? We're taking a look at the mathematical definition of rings in abstract algebra. So let's go ahead and take um, a look at the definition. So a ring, let's call it R, okay? Um, so a ring R, we're focusing on non-commutative rings in this definition. There are commutative rings and non-commutative rings. I'm just focusing on um, non-commutative rings in this definition. So um, let's say a ring R, a non-commutative ring, is a set with two binary operations. namely addition and multiplication and it could be denoted as r representing the name of the ring um, and the two operations addition and multiplication where the following properties or axioms hold the first is closure okay so um we have closure under multiplication and addition um, in the set of rings okay so what does closure mean um, if a set is a ring well it basically means that addition and multiplication are closed when you add or multiply elements in a ring you end up with elements in that ring okay elements in that in that set um, you don't end up with elements in another set so um, that's illustrated here. Let's say that A and B are in a ring, let's say R, then the sum and the product of those two elements of that um, set are going to be in that set. That's what closure means. When you start with um, two elements of a set, you add or multiply, you end up with another element in that set that the two original elements um, you selected came from. Okay, so you want to note that um, rings is closed under addition and multiplication. Now, if you remember the definition of groups, groups is closed under multiplication. Okay, so rings is um, closure under addition and multiplication, but groups is just multiplication. All right, next is associativity. So um, for rings, the associative property applies to both addition and multiplication. Okay, we all know what the associative property is. So if you're adding or multiplying three elements from a set, the grouping does not matter. It does not alter the result. So A plus quantity B plus C is the same thing as quantity A plus B plus C. Now the associative property for addition and then for multiplication um, the associative property also applies for a non-commutative ring all right the next condition is additive identity for just addition okay um, so a set r is a ring if it has an identity an additive identity element we know what an identity is right um, if you take an element from a set and you carry out an operation with an identity with that identity you end up with um, the original element from that set that you started with okay so with rings um, you have an additive identity um, namely zero so that um, when you carry out an addition of an element from that um, ring and zero, you end up with what you started with, okay? So you see it is illustrated here for all A in a set R. If it's a ring, then A plus zero is equal to zero plus A. That illustrates the additive identity, okay? All right, the next property is the commutative property. For non-commutative rings, um, we have commutativity for just addition. Okay, so 
um, this is where this um, non-commutative business comes into play. A ring that's not commutative, the non-commutativity of the elements of this ring applies just to multiplication. Okay, so you want to keep that in mind. So for non-commutative ring, addition is still commutative. It's just multiplication that is not commutative. All right, so it's commutativity holds for addition. So the order in which you add elements in a set that is a ring does not matter. Okay, A plus B is equal to B plus A. All right, let's take a look at the next axiom that um, the set that is a ring must satisfy, and that is additive inverse for just addition. Okay, um, R has an additive inverse, which is the element, um, the opposite of an element minus A. For each A um, in R, there exists an element, negative A in R, such that um, when you add the two elements, the element and its additive inverse, um, in any order, so we can have um, negative a plus zero plus a, or a plus negative a, we still end up with the additive identity element, uh, which is zero that we talked about in property number three, okay? So there is an additive inverse uh, for elements of a set that is a ring. Next property that holds is the, is the distributivity, okay? The distributivity of multiplication over addition, all right? So basic distributive property, multiplication distributes over addition. So if you have three elements, A, B, C, A times B plus C, is equal to a times b plus a times c. So we see our basic distributive property in action here in uh, axiom number six in the definition of a ring. Now, what are some examples of non-commutative rings? Um, let's take a look at some simple examples there are many more um, complicated ones. A simple example of a non-commutative ring um, are matrices, the set of matrices. We know that uh, matrices are closed. The associative property holds for matrices. We have the ident additive identity for matrices, namely the zero matrix. We know that addition commutes for matrices. And um, we also have the additive inverse of a matrix. Distributivity um, of multiplication over addition, we know that we can um, basically carry out this distributive um, process, uh, algorithm out on, on matrices without altering um, the result, okay? So um, this is an example of a non-commutative ring. Now, what are, is an example of a set of numbers that do not qualify as rings? Uh, an example is a set of positive integers. Now, if you think about the set of positive integers, which of these following axioms or properties from one to six, does this violate? The property that I can think of is the additive inverse, okay? You also do not have the, um, the additive identity because for positive integers, you're going from one, two, three, four, and on. The zero element is not there, so you do not have an additive identity 
for the um, set of positive integers. Also, since all the numbers are positive, you do not have an additive inverse. All right, you lack additive inverse and additive identities. So um, that clearly shows us that positive integers are not commutative rings. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. And you can include a comment in the comment section below this video if you have questions um, about this um, presentation. More clips can be found on mathgotserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.